good morning all respected speaker dr kv ramamurthy sir and uh, convener of this program dr jagdish panda sir principals faculty members of all pharmacy colleges across the india welcoming you all for this one week faculty development program on holistic approaches for excellence in pharmaceutical education research and publishing conducted by ragu college of pharmacy andhra pradesh today we have on board three members along with me myself jogendra kumar ragu college of pharmacy and our eminent speaker dr kv ramamurthy sir and our convener dr jagdish panda sir now i request dr jagdish panda sir please take over the session and say about our eminent speaker thank you sir thank you mr jogendra and uh, sir good morning and welcome sir good morning and uh, uh, dear uh, participants principals colleagues principals and dear participants good morning to all of you and once again welcome to this uh, the sixth day program and indeed today sir the, my speaker is my teacher and very honest to say the title of this fdp is chosen and given by sir only it's very happy to me to say this words and such a way he is taking care uh, mentoring his students uh, even uh, at any time at any cost uh, at any place so this is an exemplary where uh, in such a covid time also when i asked the uh, almost i think one and a half month back i asked actually first time when i spoke to him sir told that you uh, just identify the good topics then we will discuss so with that started that journey today we almost we have came to an end around 80% of all the lectures are over tomorrow only the one lecture is remained and thank you very much sir for your sustained encouragement for all of us and you are the, the really a role model for any pharmacy professional and as a personal as a very good human being for anybody you are in the society you are a very good role model and uh, sir is very well known uh, scholar a great uh, research personality in, in india as well as world in the entire globe for his pharmaceutical uh, contributions and i feel it's my proud and privilege and uh, read out uh, sir's uh, brief bio data so that uh, everyone uh, will can understand uh, what capacity of sir and uh, today sir is delivering on the teaching methods laboratory skills and practice course for pharmacy and uh, sir uh, <coughs> actually uh, right now he is a principal professor in pharmaceutical uh, professor in pharmaceutical technology and principal for the au college of pharmaceutical sciences andhra university visakhapatnam he did in 1987 uh, okay he started his career in pharmacy in 1979 b pharmacy and in 1982 m pharmacy in pharmaceutical technology from andhra university 1983 post graduate diploma in applied statistics from andhra university 1987 phd in pharmaceutical technology from andhra university <clears throat> so coming to the academic experience in 82 to 82 to 85 he did his phd in ugc research fellow from 85 to 89 as assistant professor department of pharmaceutical sciences andhra university in 89 to 98 associate professor department of pharmaceutical sciences andhra university visakhapatnam to the 1998 to 2018 professional department of pharmaceutical sciences andhra university visakhapatnam and in 2018 professor with a higher grade pay still sir is continuing so coming to the sir's awards awarded with dr lvg nargund professor cj shishu best research award in pharmacy by association of pharmaceutical teachers of india october 11 in 2019 awarded state best teacher award in pharmacy by government of andhra pradesh on september 5, 5 in 2015 awarded dr sarvepalli radhakrishnan best academician of the year 2010 by andhra university <coughs> awarded mm -hmm. apa teacher of the year award 2009 by association of pharmaceutical teachers of india awarded ap scientist award 2007 by andhra pradesh state council of science and technology environment forest science and technology department government of andhra pradesh hyderabad awarded 500 dollars as a travel grant by association of, association of american pharmaceutical uh, sciences 
for the preparation aaps for the presentation of papers at 2006 aaps annual meeting and exposition awarded travel grant for attending aaps 2006 annual meeting and exposition san antonio usa by ugc unassigned grant on aict awarded best Re best research award 2005 by andhra university in the 74th convocation selected by andhra university for the award of international study and research grant for conducting the research in a foreign country for a period of two months with a grant of one lakh so countries visited by sir japan and usa visited toyoma um, perfecture japan during the november 24 to 30 2019 under the sakura science exchange program administered by japan science and technology agency and member of sakura science club gave invited talk in the 15th international symposium on traditional medicine in tayoma 2017 organized by institute of natural medicine natural medicine tayoma university tayoma japan during november 8 to 9 2017 presented four research papers uh, in 2007 aaps uh, annual meeting and exposition held at uh, san diego convention center san diego california usa during the 11th november 15th to november 2007 as a part of international study and research grant uh, visited usa during the november 2nd 2006 january 1st uh, and first 2007 and uh, underwent uh, training in the design and conduct of bioequivalence clinical trials at uh, uh, Malincodot uh, Tayoka Healthcare and uh, St. Louis, USA also visited uh, Calpis, Calpis uh, San Diego, USA and had an opportunity to see the first-hand uh, drug screening technologies using robotic uh, ultra-high throughput uh, screening system. 1536 well uh, well played technique etc presented two research papers in 2006 aaps annual uh, meeting and uh, exposition held at the henry b gonzalez convention center san antonio usa during 29th october 2nd november 2006 uh, played the screening etc research activities areas of research interest uh, controlled release doses from micro encapsulation mat matrices coated beads gastric floating drugs delivery drug delivery systems chronotherapeutic drug delivery systems muco adhesive drug delivery systems evaluation of natural gums and uh, polysaccharide for their uh, applicability as excipients in the design of novel drug delivery systems development of um, oral lipid based formulation for improving oral bioavailability of poorly water soluble drugs biopharmaceutical studies development and evaluation of a vesicular drug delivery system liposomes and neosomes stealth carrier based drug delivery system chronotherapeutic drug delivery system research guidance postdoctoral students from nigeria one and phd thesis guided and awarded 61 phd students presently working for um, mfarm project guided 113 and research papers published and accepted 180 research papers presented scientific conference 95 number of research projects completed 10 number of ongoing research projects 2 and number of patents 4 administrative and professional uh, activities principal as a uh, principal for au college of pharmaceutical sciences from uh, uh, 37 2019 to till date chairman board of studies andhra university college of pharmaceutical sciences 10th july 2018 to 10th july 2019 member Consent of Operation AP Pollution Control Board and a Member Environment Waste Disposal Committee since February 2016. Academia Controller, uh, sorry, Academy, Acad Academic Coordinator, Rusa Andhra University since April 2016. Member NAC Steering Committee, Andhra University, April 2013, January 2016. Placement and Training Officer, University College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Andhra University, Vishakapatnam, March 2007 to June 2014. Warden AU Engineering College Hostels, Andhra University, Vishakapatnam. January 2099 to July 8, 2008, uh, 2005. Member Vigilance Committee, North Campus to Prevent Ragging, Andhra University, Vishakapatnam. August 2000, uh, August 1999 to 2001.
Member Departmental Committee 95 to 98. Membership in professional bodies. Life member in following professional bodies. Indian Pharmaceutical Association. Association of Pharmacy Teachers of India. Registered Pharmacy State, State Pharmacy Council. Indian Pharmacy Graduate Association. Other activities. Inspector, Pharmacy Council of India, All India Council for Technical Education. Both are uh, in both, uh, he's uh, acting as an inspector, senior inspector. A referee for international scientific publication, drug development, industrial pharmacy, and International Journal of Pharmaceutics, AAPS, Pharm Pharmaceutical Sciences, Tech Pharma G, Tech, Tech Pharma G, etc. So uh, these are three public uh, journals. And another one, editorial board member for various journals, member of board of studies, uh, Sri Venkateshra University, Tirupati, and Acharya Nagarjuna University, member board research studies, uh, Biju Patnaik Technical, you know, Technological University, Raurkela, chairman for various scientific sessions at different national and international seminar, member of scientific uh, screening committee of AAPS USA. So, with this uh, uh, great biodata, it's a very great privilege to all of us sir, to hear you and uh, we are very proud that we are the, being your students and definitely you are uh, uh, gracing uh, this uh, FDP is uh, meaningful and definitely it will be a great opportunity to every participant who will uh, at the end of the session they will have a lot of questions and definitely they are uh, very good answers they will uh, very memorable experience definitely they will have and thank you very much sir and on behalf of my management and my faculty and all uh, we welcome you and please uh, proceed to your lecture, sir. Thank you, Dr. Panda, for your nice words about me. Yeah. So, a very good morning to all the participants. Today, I would like to talk something related to teaching methods, laboratory skills, and practice schools for pharmacy. And I'm going to cover all these things under three different heads. And let us go to the definition of what is teaching. It is the process of attending to people's needs, experiences and feelings, and intervening so that they learn particular things and go beyond the given. That means we should understand what is the student's need, what type of experience the student is interested in having, what type of feelings the student is interested in going is going interested in having and we have to intervene in such a way such that we need to teach in that particular direction such that the student can go beyond the things what are being taught to him and we need to understand two components of the teaching that is what we are giving and what we are receiving from the student that means what we are going to give to the student and we should know what is received by the student and accordingly we have to modulate the receivings that are being made by the students again to modulate for giving some new concepts and we are going to impart the knowledge in a way the student is interested in understanding not we want to understand and normally majority of the institutes used to follow the formal teaching methods there the lessons are being prepared according to the curriculum that is given to this teacher and we give the lessons and we assess the students performance in the way of uh, evaluations and progress but what is a good teaching a good teaching methods helps the students to question their preconceptions and motivates them to learn by putting them in a situation in which they come to see themselves as the authors of answers as the agents of responsibility for change. The meaning of this is we need to understand the student's interest and we need to prepare the student such that the student should be able to question what preconceptions they are having in their mind and we need to motivate them and we have to create a situation where they can create the answers themselves, not the answers given by the teacher. So a good teacher must be able to achieve this goal, but not just simply by giving some questions and answers in the form of a teaching notes. And finally, in the end examination, if the student reproduces the same answer and he is given 100% marks, he is not called as good teacher. So there are types of learnings. One is 
didactic learning the other one is deep learning we need to adopt these procedures based on the need otherwise it may lead to a chaos so normally this didactic learning is used for large groups and in the form of a lecture and it is always a one way oriented that means you you know unidirectional and only surface learning and it is in the existence for the last centuries and it is individualistic and competitive but deep learning nowadays people are more interested in giving the deep learnings especially the western universities are following these concepts where the students are in small groups and always the sessions are highly interactive and it leads to a two way discussion that means the teacher gives the lecture and students is go students are going to participate in the discussion for getting their knowledge and there is an in depth or intrinsic learning and it is a relatively new and popular approach nowadays nowadays being practiced so we are going to evaluate the students on one to one basis not as a group evaluation and we are going to give different performance scores and we will be getting a personalized feedback from the student about the caliber of a teacher so deep learning is more useful but again keeping in view of some situations like a country like india where the number of students are very high the number of teachers are very small we may not be able to follow this type of deep learning unless there is a systematic change both in the government point of view as well as the parents point of view as well as teachers point of view so we cannot say this is optimum or this is optimum but we need to go according to the convenience whatever that is practicable in that particular situation and there are different teaching styles authoritative which is used normally for a higher education with an auditorium type of setting that means one person is teaching and others are listening and in this there is a very small scope for interaction and may not be that much accurate especially some people may be feeling bored and demonstrator where they will be using tools like multimedia presentations and other activities and it is individual needs in larger classrooms may be at stake facilitator it is going to develop critical thinking skills that means we are going to create some idea among the minds of the students where the students start thinking why can't it happen like this why can't it happen like this but it is a challenge to the teacher to interact with the student but because when once we start the critical thinking skill in the mind of a student the student start thinking in a different way and he puts on so many questions and the teachers must be ready to answer these types of challenges what are being put to them and delegator guided discovery and inquiry based learning that means we are going to delegate some target to the student and the student is going to deliver that and during this process we are going to monitor how the student is going to perform based on the targets that are giving so here also the teacher's authority is eroded because once the power is delegated to the student he may go in any direction of his choice and at that time the teacher may not be in a position to control some of the students so one should be careful in using this type of approach the hybrid approach is teacher's personality and interact interest with students so the teacher is going to have his image that is created in the mind of the student such that we are going to have a positive attitude or sometimes a negative attitude also but in many cases assuming that coming from the ancient systems of india all the gurus of india are great gurus and hence we assume teacher's personality is going to influence the students approach and trying to be too many things that means here the teacher has to try so many things and he should master all these things such that he can create a role model situation to the student and what is effective teaching we have to acquire the re relevant knowledge about the students and using this knowledge we have to inform what is the type of the course design that is made for the student and how it is going to be adopted for the classroom teaching so unless you inculcate its interest in the student it is not a good teaching so we should know what is the syllabus why the syllabus is framed what are the the course designs that are made for the classroom teaching and we have to align three major components of instruction to the students what is that is learning objectives 
that means what the student must learn assessments how the students are going to be assessed and what are the activities that are to be taken by the student for achieving these instructions and articulating expli ex explicit expectations regarding learning objectives and policies so we have to articulate properly what are the expectations that are expected from the students for this particular topic what he is going to learn and we have to prioritize the knowledge and skills that are chosen to focus on that means we have to make the different priorities this is my priority one this is my priority two like that to inculcate the required skills into the minds of the students and involves recognizing and overcoming the, overcoming the expert blind spots which is very 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 critical for a good teacher that means i started my career as a teacher and in the beginning i am not a good teacher but i learned how to become a good teacher with the guidance of my great teachers what are my weak points how i have to overcome those weak points how to address the students how to create an eye to eye contact with a student how to explain my explain the concepts on the board when i am writing so all these are the blind spots of very great teachers who are able to come over a come come over, come over those blind spots to become great teachers so every teacher must try hard to overcome the blind spots what are there in his teaching or her teaching and accordingly they have to modulate themselves for becoming a good and effective teachers adopting appropriate teaching roles to support the learning goals here we have to have different teaching roles sometimes we need to explain only on the blackboard because there is no other facility sometimes we have to modulate ourselves or we have the state of the art technology at our fingerprints that we need to know what is the state of the art technology and how to use that so we need to modulate our teaching skills in such a way such that we have to adapt to the situation to support the learning goals what are contemplated in the syllabus and we have to progressively refine the courses which is very very important i just tell a small story which may be i may be telling sometimes some stories please bear with my boring there is a good teacher in uh, one particular specialization in andhra university way back in 70s he is a good teacher no doubt but he is sufficiently old and reluctant for the new concepts that are coming in that particular course so when the juniors requested him sir we wanted to revise the syllabus of the subject which you are teaching he immediately told the juniors because all our students and the juniors to him you change as you like i am not bothered but i will teach the same subject whatever you change i am not bothered that means he is not interested in going to the new concepts of that particular development but he retired from the service because of his son's settlement in us he is forced to migrate to us and he is not able to sit idle in america and started visiting the university of new york where his students are also there and because of their pressure he started teaching again there in the particular university on honorary basis there he realized what is teaching and he served in that university for another 10 more years and had a very good name for his credit is considered to be one of the great teachers in the particular specialization so how we are going to refine the course how we are going to adapt the developments in that particular field of specialization you are involved is going to be more important and that gives a very good feedback about your caliber of effective teacher and what are the principles we need to follow for creating this effective teacher we have to have the mindset that means it should be growth and the second one is grit we have to have the goals resilience and institute institution and time so we have to have all these things in our mind so we have to set the goals and the resilience what is the failure you are having in teaching this particular content and how to overcome this and institution we have to have the particular interest for teaching this particular subject and time line which is very important what is the time line within which i have to finish all these things so all these four are called as grit and we have to have the proper grit on our mind 
and daily mode how we are going to teach motivation which is very important for a teacher and we have to have professional culture so we have all this we should have all the characteristics and assessment for learning what is the feedback that is being received formative assessment using data as information responsive teaching and climate for learning we have to create the climate for learning to the student the presence of the teacher in the class i remember my great teacher professor v suparao garu who is the principal of uh, college of science and technology member executive council of andhra university he is the chairman faculty of pharmaceutical sciences he is the head of the department of pharmacy sometime so with all these great responsibilities the being the senior most founder faculty members of andhra university i still remember he used to teach dispensing pharmacy to to us and whenever there is a practical class for a period of for about 3 hours period the he physically used to come into the laboratory he used to sit in the laboratory he used to demonstrate the experiments to us and he never moved out of the class till the class is completed so that is the dedication what is there in a senior teacher in spite of his busy schedule of appointments he used to have in those days but still he used to be physically present in the class so that makes the student more responsible for learning and look and be seen what is our presence Pro proactivity repair relationships that means we may have some issues with the students we need to repair repair them properly preparation for teaching so how we are going to prepare for the class work is very important and how we are going to give you our planning of the class i remember my great teacher professor e venkatra i may be remembering those teachers because i'm teaching i'm talking on a subject related to teaching skills so the great teacher professor e venkatra garu the period is for 45 minutes in our education and he used to come into the class exactly at the ring of the bell and he used to start the lecture by giving a small introduction about the class what is completed in the previous period and within 5 minutes and then he used to continue the japanese joining the last class with the present class and after completion of this class he used to conclude the class within 2 to 3 minutes then he used to call the attendance and when he is calling the last name of the class the bell used to ring so that is the exact planning of the great teacher for completing the class without any small difference and if we used to look at the watch and even if the bell is not ringing ringing also it is exactly 45 minutes that is completed so how we are going to plan for your lecture how we are going to coordinate your lectures is going to be very very important so all these are going to be under the preparation of teaching and teaching for learning so use of teacher talk modeling and demonstration questioning student learning teacher student talk ratio that means you may be giving a very good lecture but the students are keeping silent so that does not mean that your lecture is great or good the student should be able to create a question from the learning what is made by you in the class and then only if you are giving a clarification understandable to the student you are called as a very good teacher if you don't get any questions it does not mean that it is a great lecture because there are no questions i have given a great lecture that is not the correct way of presentation what a good teacher should have and what are the opportunities that are there for pharmaceutical students just i am just briefly mentioning here the students may go towards the practice may go towards the industry or towards the non clinical and in the practice they may be in the community pharmacy or hospital pharmacy or clinical pharmacy when they go to the industry there are different opportunities in the production sales r and d packing etc etc when they go to the non clinical they may be involved in the academic or research or in the regulatory so when we are training the students in the pharmacy curriculum we need to keep in mind we don't know x is going to pharmacy practice or y is going to industry or z is going to non clinical so we have to create an environment for the learner to teach all these concepts on equal basis without any bias such that once the student goes out of the college they should be ready to go to take any of these professions that are mentioned here 
So, what are the innovative teaching learning methodologies in pharmacy? Of course, these are the methodologies adopted in all sciences, including arts. But still, I'm naming it pharmacy because we are from pharmacy. So, these are the various teaching approaches besides the cons uh, 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 what we have the conventional blackboard teaching, the latest technologies, because we are in an era where we need to adopt all these conceptual teachings to the students. So, the first one is information and communication technology tools, ICT, which is the short form. Everybody now speak about this particular concept every time. Whenever a teacher evaluation is performed, the first question that appears in the evaluation form is what ICT tools this teacher is adopting for teaching to the students. So we have to use the information technologies, communication technologies. So it led to a significant evolution. I'm not saying it, but how the institutions are going to integrate these technologies into their organization and especially in their teaching because of the various constraints. Because when you look at some colleges, they say we have only one LCD projector. We have only one computer that is working. I'm not blaming any college, but it's the ground reality I'm talking. So one need to have proper infrastructure facilities for having this ICT tools adopted in that particular institution. So DAR starting with the occasional use of ICT in the good olden days, because some teachers used to feel instead of teaching it on a blackboard, if I use a PowerPoint presentation, it will be more convenient for me to teach certain concepts and because of ease of teaching. And now that is completely transformed into a virtual environment for courses conducted completely online because we know the situation. Because I'm talking to about 900 to 1000 delegates as per the information that is given to me, I'm not seeing anybody's face. But I hope everybody is listening to me. So because of this COVID-19 pandemic, we are forced to adopt these ICT tools. So in the same way, we can adopt these ICT tools for teaching the students. And among that, first one is e-learning. So we have the communication technology and we can have a spectrum of activities using this te technology to support our teaching skills. And there are different e-learning websites in pharmaceutical certification courses or programs or degrees and Corsia, edX, Udemy, these are all the various organizations that are offering different types of online courses where the student is being awarded even with a degree or diploma or some certification as per their standards by following certain course curriculum, examination patterns, assignments, etc. And young learning. So nowadays, majority of the students are restricted to very small rural areas where the communication is a very big issue. But in spite of all these things, we all know majority of the students are using these mobiles. So using it as a tool, young learning is devised and we can use this young learning facility to reach to the students. The major advantage of this M learning is there is no need of a dedicated computer system or dedicated internet system or anything. So people cannot claim that there are no resources for them. Only thing what you need to have is a smart mobile. It need not be smart mobile like iPhone 10 or 11 or something like uh, 65 to 70,000 mobile, even four to 5,000 mobiles with some uh, uh, smart screen display is just sufficient enough, which is capable of connecting to an internet facility. So we can use the mobile network for using this M learning and hope many of my listeners may be using their mobile only to listen to my talk. So we can use the other tools in synchronization with this M learning or Skype, Google Classroom, Yahoo Messenger, Zoom, I need not mention the other software. And there are different popular apps in pharma includes ACS mobile case, all these are the different uh, mobile learning uh, platforms that are used for various applications. And library of learning material and intranet facility. So 
it is not our general library the college can create a library consisting of different powerpoint presentations or lectures of the experts in the college youtube videos which are downloaded into the system given by the experts and we can have different data files which are downloaded from the various indexed journals in the form of pdf copies or scanned copies or even the lecture notes or the multiple choice questions etc which are kept at the disposal of the students in the library at any at any common place where a student can access and use it and we can have a feedback form also on this such that for example somebody is listening to my lecture he is not happy with some of the comments what i have made so he can just send me a feedback saying that sir in your particular so and so slide your comment is not correct or you are not good in so and so slide something like that such that it will be also an informative session to the experts also to change their presentations so we can have that uh, that sorts of ex uh, experiences for this and innovative teaching learning methodologies so we have to create some innovation in education and we have to create the students also to think about in a different way and uncover something new so unlike the conventional teaching if you can just inculcate some interest in the mind of a student it certainly initiates the spark that is hidden in the student i'll tell you a small story here there is a physics professor who is teaching the barometric related uh, content so he gave a question in the examination paper i think all of you many of you may be knowing i'm repeating it please bear with the repetition if i'm repeating it otherwise you just listen and enjoy the story there this question is how you are going to measure the height of a building using a barometer because the subject is chapter is related to barometry the teacher's expectation is by measuring the pressure difference at the beginning at the bottom of the building to the top of the building he has to calculate the height of the building using the formula given to the student but the student is much more clever or something naughty or whatever you call he gave an answer saying that i will carry a thread along with the barometer to the top of the building and tying the thread to the barometer i will drop it to the bottom of the building and i will measure the length of the thread along with the barometer and i can calculate the height of the building so the teacher felt this fellow is not good in this particular pressure related topic but he is not interested in failing the student he asked the student in presence of another physics professor and what is the answer you are expected to give for this question the student waited for about 3 to 4 minutes but did not answer properly then the next professor another professor who is one senior most professor asked do you know the answer or not sir i have the answers i am thinking which is to be given so the senior professor got puzzled i am expecting only one answer this fellow is saying four answers how is it possible then you tell the answers the student told i'll be moving this like a like a pendulum in the top of the building and the bottom of the building and based on that i can calculate the height or i will measure the height of this barometer i'll go on climbing the steps by measuring it by turning it on the different steps and i can calculate the height or i will be dropping this barometer from the top of the building to the bottom and i will note down the speed with which it travel and based on that i can calculate the height of the building but he never gave the answer what these professors are expecting so finally the professor asked can you give the right answer yes sir that is also there but i am thinking in a different way so some students are very clever very naughty we have to create an environment for their thought provoking sense such that they can innovate new things and that will also inculcate some new interest in the teachers mind also so innovating teaching learning methodology should be adopted sometimes in the class teaching and mind mapping a mind map is a diagram used to visually organize the information in the particular way of diagrams writing in sentences etc 
and they can be drawn by hand or rough notes or other sessions and just bear with the inconvenience hello yeah i'm sorry for the break because it is an official call i have to answer that so we'll be having different pictorial methods and models to create interest in learning to the students for example chemotherapy agents their mechanism of action or renin angiotensin system for salt and water balance which are going to present the coming slides you can see how the mechanism of action is going to be exerted by the chemotherapy agents and it is a present in the form of a pictorial diagram and if a student is given with this particular diagram with an explanation by the teacher it is more easy to understand by the student similar is the case with, case with the next diagram also how the renin angiotensin system is going to work and we can easily understand instead of giving an explanation step by step on the blackboard and the next part is the flow chart so flow chart is a formalized graphic representation of a logic sequence and we can give organization start or similar structure which can be easily understood by a student rather than giving a broad explanation for example inorganic analysis of an unknown compound so we can create a decision making chart if it is failing you go like this if it is positive you go like this such that the student can ultimately understand what is the negative side of the analysis what is the positive side of the analysis and if my majority of the people who are listening to me might have seen the decision making chart of the stability analysis given in the ICH guidelines for various uh, stability testing procedures majority of these decision making charts are given in this form of this flow charts if it is failed you go like this if it is passed you go like this so it can be easily understood by a student in a more comprehensive way rather than by an explanation and majority of my chemistry friends are well equipped with these model types where using a model for explaining the bonds that are going to be formed from different types of reactions in the stereochemistry etc and the fourth one is the flipped classroom teaching which is more regularly practiced in the western universities especially majority of the american universities are now adopting this flipped classroom teaching so what is this flipped classroom teaching flipping a class means designing lessons such that a student learns content listening to the lectures at home that means the student is going to download the lectures given by the respective teachers at their homes and when they come to the class they are going to have an interactive session for application of the learning what is made in the form of a lecture by the student so i visited some universities in us where this is well practiced especially university of pittsburgh university of indianapolis and uh, university of uh, i think uh, other other places so all these places the teachers will be posting their lectures one day in advance to the all classes all the students of the class in that particular uh, group now we are having whatsapp and other related uh, things but in those days they have their own systems of emails where a group email is sent with a link to the student such that the student is going to listen to the lecture well in advance before coming to the class once the class is started the teacher always interacts with the student by raising some questions and how the student is able to understand the concept what is given by him in the form of a lecture so this leads to an increased faculty student satisfaction as well as interaction that means student can have more interaction with the teacher rather than listening to a particular lecture monotonously and there are certain websites or the college or the institution can create the virtual labs for example as per the new pci syllabus animal experiments are completely banned for the b farm students and instead pci is suggesting to use the virtual laboratories with a different software and by giving these types of experiences the student can feel a number of times if he is doing the real experiment in the class he is having 
only one chance or maximum two chances for doing that particular experiment in the class because the colleges may not allow the student to repeat the experiments number of times until he succeeds but in a virtual laboratory he can go on doing the same lab experiment n number of times to get the acquaintance with the conditions to be adopted the skill that is to be developed etc so majority of the universities what they are adopting is initially they train the students in the regular classroom and the laboratory for the laboratory work and later on they provide the student with the virtual laboratory skills wherein they can the student can feel the real life situation at the home or any other place where the virtual lab is created so that the acquaintance will be very clear for the student and jet to ear approach which of which is one of the most novel technique nowadays being adopted in majority of the classes and even if you read good textbooks for example uh, in pharmaceutical engineering uh, we have very good books like perry or badger and bankero or even professor sammurthy's book if you read them carefully in some concepts initially the concepts are not explained only the applications are well explained in the beginning like for example crystallization what is a crystallizer what are the different crystallizers that are there what is the classification how they are going to work then at the end of the chapter the concepts of crystallization the crystallization theory mayer supersaturation theory are explained similarly the case with size reduction so in such cases we are now applying teaching the student what is the application of the concept that is going to be taught to him for example the chemical when you are teaching the chemistry chemical basis of drug action stability structural activity relationships mechanism of action pharmacology absorption distribution metabolism excretion and toxicology all these can be explained to the student in the beginning then how it is going to be synthesized for achieving these particular concepts can be more easily explained to the student so that the student can understand in a befitting way and but here the skill of the teacher is very important because the example what i have given is from chemistry for engineering it is okay but for giving a chemistry the student must have at least the basics of the chemistry to understand all these concepts basics of pharmacology so the approach of a teacher for teaching this of jet to ear approach is also very important and critical then the creative thinking so we have to create some tools in the form of playful games or visual exercises which are going to excite the student minds to capture their interest so kindergarten is the best example where instead of teaching the conventional way of approach the kindergarten teachers use some models storyboards etc and they used to teach the students so which is a time tested method and the outcomes are also very significant in this particular case and real world learning sometimes i think 15 days back or 20 days back i have seen a whatsapp video sent by some of my friends in which a 6 months old baby was just kept near the swimming pool and mother is just by her side but she is not bothered what this child is doing and ultimately the child jumped into the swimming pool but mother is very quiet and calm watching what the baby is going to do but within one minute the baby started floating and moving her legs and hands and she started floating on the water so the reason for doing like that by the mother is she lost her elder son in the same accident where at the age of 3 years the boy fell into the swimming pool and not able to withstand the shock he died so keeping in view of that the mother wanted to do this experiment for the next child who is hardly 6 months old so a real world experience sometimes teaches the students in a more effective way rather than a theoretical way of exposure so we have to give examples relating to the real world for example get some market products of farm like spices or 
other items related to pharmacognosy and ask the students to identify what is the adulterant in that. Certainly, that creates some interest in the student. And sometimes the accidental discoveries, what we are teaching to the students as history, for example, discovery of penicillin, discovery of sulfonamides as antibacterial agents, nitrogen mustard as an anti-cancer agent. These are all done by accidental discovery, not by a serious research approach. Sometimes this is very helpful for learning to the student. And brainstorming sessions. Instead of creating a problem by the teacher and solving by himself, it is better to give a problem to a group of students. This is the problem. You please solve it. Once the group is given this responsibility, each person in that group starts thinking in a different way to give a solution for this. They discuss them in between, in between themselves and finally, they can come out with a good conclusion for giving a specific solution for a particular problem given by the teacher. So during this particular situation, what happens is the inculcation of learning capabilities in the minds will be very, very high. And I am telling you a small, my personal experience and remembering my great teacher again, Professor Vimala Devigaru, who used to teach us physical pharmacy in second year before. One day she came into the class and gave us a problem saying that estimate the stability of ascorbic acid. That is the only statement she gave to us and left the class. And we have taken the ascorbic acid sample, 2,4-dinitrophenol, indophenol. Even today in my sleep itself, I remember the reagent name in such a great way because we worked a lot on this. 2,4-dinitrophenol, indophenol, which is an Indian pharmacopoeial essay method for ascorbic acid. So we prepared the solutions. And when we added the first drop through the burette, the pink color appeared in the ascorbic acid solution, indicating that the titration is over. So as per the calculations, ascorbic acid is zero. So we tried three times, four times, but no answer. And when we reached to the teacher, she said, you are useless fellows. You are not doing it correctly. Then we went to the library. We struggled a lot and finally identified that this is a very specific titration method wherein it is going to estimate only the ascorbic acid, but not the oxidized form of the ascorbic acid. Then we examined the qualities of oxidized form of ascorbic acid and the pure ascorbic acid. It was mentioned that pure ascorbic acid is very light yellow in color, whereas the oxidized form is yellow in color. So when we examined our sample, it is a completely yellow colored ascorbic acid. Then we realized that it is not ascorbic acid. Then how to get the pure ascorbic acid? I done in my life first time along with my other friends who are in a very good positions now, very, very top positions. We have stolen the ascorbic acid from another teacher's cupboard, the great Professor Emma Narayanan, who used to lock everything under lock and key. Other teachers used to leave the cupboards free, whereas he used to lock everything under lock and key. So when the lock is opened accidentally, we took the ascorbic acid, we titrated it in the class without the knowledge of anybody and we could identify that it is able to give the exact estimation what is expected from our study. And next day we reported the issue to the Professor Mala Devi and she said, you are good. But the first question she immediately asked us is, where from you got the ascorbic acid? We cannot say it was stolen from Professor Mala Ryan's cupboard. We told, we got it from some other chemistry department, something like that. But still, that created an interest in learning things on our own because there is a problem which is to be solved because teacher is not coming to our rescue. Though Vimla Devi is a great teacher, sometimes she never comes to the rescue of the student for one reason or other. So it created a brainstorm in the group of the students who are able to get the solution by a group discussion and research. So majority of these solutions, what a student is going to get in the brainstorm sessions is a collective approach nowadays being practiced by many teachers. Classes outside the classroom which is a very regular feature nowadays, where we take the students to a pharmacognosy or herbal garden, where we teach about pharmacognosy. 
and teaching how the tablet machine is going to work by taking them to the machine room by dismantling the entire tablet machine and refixing the total tablet machine one after the other. What is the turret? Right, what is the upper punch? What is the lower punch? All these things. The student will have more interest in doing and learning those things. So it helps the students in a very good way. And storyboard telling. Some of the teachers are very great teachers. And I remember Professor N. Vishwanathan Garu, who is a great teacher in pharmaceutical analysis. Whenever he comes to the class, we used to eagerly wait for his class because while giving the lecture on analysis, he used to give a nice stories related to his experience correlating with the analysis. And we used to listen to them and we used to pray the God, let the attender extend the bell ringing for another 10 more minutes because such an interesting story he used to tell for every topic he used to cover in the particular analysis class. So storyboard telling is another important teaching technology, but for that the teacher has to have a lot of vocabulary skills, creative skills, like a writer skills, all these things. And when once the teacher is successful in creating a storyboard, it is going to be a very, very effective class. And cooperative learning in which the students are formed into the types of groups and this, each student is going to give an, a particular task and all these tasks, tasks are pulled together to have the outcome of the learning and this is going to be a good approach and this creates among the students about the positive independence attitude, individual accountability because each student is given a particular task and he is supposed to fulfill that particular task and we have to have face-to-face -face promotive interactions and appropriate use of interpersonal and teamwork skills because all the students may not have the same type of skills. Some are very good for talking, some are very good for writing, some are very good for collection of information, some are very good for mobilizing the resources. So if we can have these things together, one can learn the skill from the other in an easy way. So here the regular self-assessment of the team functioning is also being done because when there is a small competition between the different groups who are working together, they feel that the other group is going to dominate us. So we have to assess how we are going to improve the speed, etc. So the cooperative learning is also one of the tools one can adopt for certain types of lecture programs. So I have given different types of the innovating teaching methods to be provided to the students to improve their experience of learning in the present day world and how they are going to encounter different problems related to these works, what they are going to learn and what different methodologies that can be adopted which will improve the quality of learning and the society aspects. But my opinion, all these cannot be applied individually for teaching methodologies. We have to define, depending upon the subject that is being taught, depending upon the mentality of the student, depending upon the environment in which the in the teacher, in which the teacher is teaching. All these are going to play a very important role in deciding the innovating teaching methods adaptability. And based on that only, we have to adapt. Otherwise, the teaching, the name of innovating teaching methodologies, what I have discussed may become a big failure saying that this may not be suitable for this particular group. So one need to be very choosy in making all these methods selection. Second part of my lecture is the laboratory skills. So whenever a student is going to work in the laboratory, first and foremost important thing the student and teacher must bear in the mind is safety of the person, safety of the surroundings, all these things. So we have to train the students in such a way such that the students are going to master the basic laboratory skills, the field work skills and maintenance skills. Field work skills means when they are working in the laboratory, what skill they need to have to work in the laboratory, not in the outside laboratory. My meaning is that and maintenance skills. I know I'm not going to name X or Y or Z. 
we used to have the single pan balances in our college now they are there everywhere but in those days having a single pan balance is a great achievement for even university way back in 90s 85 90s i'm talking or even before that so there used to be only two or three single pan balances in the college and whenever we want to make by a very small quantity we need to go to that particular laboratory take the permission of the professor or the in charge then we need to wait right that in the log book one day i was told that the single pan balance is not working then nobody is there to repair it so i asked the consultant a professor who is well known to me who is my guide and philosopher professor e venkatrao garu sir i just wanted to see what is the problem with that no ramana murthy may not repair that no no sir please give me a chance i'll do it so he was physically standing by my side because he thinks that he thought that i may be spoiling that mission so i have just checked it unfortunately very small minor error in the wiring for the light and there is some deposition of dust and other things at the knife edge what is there for the particular balance inside which is preventing the movement of that particular balance so i just cleaned everything and then i just kept it in order immediately he asked me have you learned this skill no sir i just made the first experimentation on this machine only i am able to repair it so one need to have some interest in maintenance of the small instruments that are there in the college either the student or the faculty so we need to inculcate that maintenance skills in the minds of the students so what are the components of this laboratory trying to be inculcated to the students so one is basic laboratory skills i told you field work skills and maintenance skills so first and foremost basic laboratory skill is safety practice in laboratory but i am sorry to make it this comment if i am wrong i am once again i may be pardoned for this wrong comment may being made on the public platform but majority of the students of the present bfarm or mfarm curriculum are not aware of the safety practice in the laboratory not the signs what are given here very rarely many very few people are knowing the signs or the safety practices that are to be adopted in the laboratory where appropriate personal protective equipment change gloves when contaminated all these things i'm not going to read them because these are all the basic things one need to learn and we need to have proper experimental design sampling and replication i'm not talking from the statistical point of view what is being taught in the name of experimental design sampling etc this is the basic meaning what i mean to say the method that is used should be reproducible whatever titration the student is doing it should be able to he should be able to reproduce the with the same result the procedures what are adopted have to be taken into account the possible cost that will be incurred here again as an young teacher of the pharmacy college in 85 to 89 uh, i am proud to say many of you may be having uh, the grouse against me many of my students who are listening to me they know that i started teaching physical pharmacy 1 and 2 right from 85 till date there is no break of that particular subject in my teaching career i have changed so many subjects but no change in that particular physical pharmacy 1 and in the beginning of my career phenol water system so take 4 ml of phenol go on adding different uh, volumes of water and measure the miscibility temperature and immiscibility temperatures that is the procedure now adopted but when we started the experiment in the college the procedure given to us every time we are taking 4 ml when we are taking 4 ml for 10 determination each student is consuming 40 ml for a class of 20 we are consuming almost 800 ml of phenol that is one side of the coin second side of the coin is whenever the student is taking 4 ml each time for about 4 5 times of the experiment one time or other the person is getting injured of the burns due to exposure of the phenol to the skin or other parts of the body and every time there is a small complaint to the head of the department again professor ivan katrawar sir we are having injury please remove this experiment from the practicals 
and whenever i am asking for the phenol quantity for the supply he used to say you are drinking phenol rather than working with phenol then i came to a conclusion i need to reduce so i devised take only 4 ml go on increasing the concentrations of water such that i can use only 4 ml for each student that means for all the 20 students i am consuming only 80 ml so i am saving almost i 9 by 10 parts of the phenol to the university so like that we have to have the cost that is going to be involved in the experiment must also be taken into account list of dependent and independent parameters must be made carefully before designing the experiment i'm not talking again statistics which are going to influence again i'm sharing my research experience i'm use i i used to estimate the formaldehyde content in the capsules which are hardened with formaldehyde by using a mcfadden method where chromotropic acid is dissolved in 60 30 60 40 ratio of sulfuric acid water but we are not getting the color as expected by the method sometimes when we studied the original article of mcfadden in one particular line he mentioned that the specific gravity of this particular sulfuric acid must be more than 1.84 grams per ml when we estimated the specific gravity or density of this particular sulfuric acid supplied to us it is only 1.6 so the experimental condition is not fulfilled so the experiment is failed so thereafter we decided to purchase only the standard company sulfuric acid for our research work so we need to identify what parameters which are dependent or independent are going to influence the experiment very critically and accordingly we need to train the students and we have to think about other events so all these are the various precautions we have to take accurate recording and record keeping i doubt again majority of the present day students they strike something are they overwrite on the same thing what is written by the student and even teachers are not bothered but we talk a lot about the documentation as per the regulations drug regulatory affairs so in any regulatory document any overwriting or striking must be properly authenticated by the person with a signature and a comment in the margin why the change is done accordingly so all these must be trained in the basic classes itself by the teachers to the students then they will know what is the importance of this correction that is made what is the importance of the cancellation that is made so all these things must be trained to the students but nowadays majority of the teachers are slightly ignorant for various reasons i don't say that wrong but they have their own pressures in the college of the large work or high work loads or some other reasons they entrust the work to the students for majority of the time and they will be out of the class at least for half an hour to 45 minutes during that time if anything is done by the student they are not bothered to correct those mistakes by just simply signing the records so please take this important care and train the students if any wrong things are made let them make the correction properly by striking it and writing correct answer or correct information next to that correction and necessity for making that correction also to be made entered by the student and how you have to write the report or summary and conclusions so i have just given it is i'm not going to elaborate in a detailed way but only one thing i need to mention here is if any negative result is obtained during the experiment let the student report that in a positive way instead of becoming shamed and destroying the total documentation and throwing it away saying that experiment is a failure so let them not do that again i share my success story with the failure i am mentioning here is my first student direct first student bantupal srinivasa rao worked on rifampicin controlled drug delivery systems development so when we developed this particular rifampicin controlled mis tablets and performed the dissolution for about 8 to 10 hours for the first 2 hours we are able to estimate the drug release properly and when once after 2 hours when we estimated the drug content in the dissolution medium the concentration started declining 
normally it should be cumulative but not should not be declined because there is no replacement of the dissolution medium there so we struggled for three months for identifying the cause he himself went to the library i myself went to the library we both went to the library sat in the chemical abstracts division for at least four to five hours a day and finally in usp where the book is currently available in the library we found that he mentioned while mentioning the dissolution procedure for the rifampicin you run two dissolutions one with the pure rifampicin kept under the similar conditions second one is the dosage form and collect the samples simultaneously from both the dissolutions and estimate the drug in comparison with the rifampicin that is kept for pure drug and we performed the study and to our surprise the absorbance value of the pure rifampicin started decreasing. When we gone for the literature survey, it was reported that it is getting oxidized over a period of time in 0.18 HCl. And that is the reason why the decrease in the concentration is occurring. So we thought of adding 0.2% ascorbic acid as an antioxidant as per the report that is given in the literature and performed the dissolution and we published a paper in the Indian Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences. And even today, it is considered as one of the very good papers cited by so many, including USP. They cited that in the next modification, they mentioned that you kept, you add 0.2% ascorbic acid for prevention of the oxidation of the rifampicin. So this is a success story from the failure of what you are able to achieve. Simply because it is getting degraded, let us change the drug or let us change something, we may not achieve. We may not have achieved this particular success. So we should have the failure also to be recorded in the proper way. When I say once again, very few colleges are teaching what is differential weighing, especially for a very small quantity like 5 mg or 10 mg. But majority of the students are now habituated for direct weighing and they start the weighing using a butter paper very, very principally and seriously, but the way the material at one place carry that butter paper in their hand all along the, to the next laboratory. And during this particular transfer, how much quantity of the weighed quantity is lost? Nobody is bothered. So we need to know what is the sensitivity of the balance? What is the minimum weighable quantity of the balance? What is the temperature? influence on the balance that is being used what is the pressure effect on this weighing that is being done what is the effect of humidity on the material that is being weighed for example sodium hydroxide when you keep a sodium hydroxide pellet in the balance it goes on changing with the weight because it absorbs moisture from the atmosphere so we have to inculcate all these weighing skills because this is most important and preliminary skill that a student must acquire, which is going to be very vital for his analytical skills in the research and other applications at a later date. So we need to train them how to use different weighing materials. For example, for weighing the powder, I'm just showing a smart preparation funnel or a weighing bottle, all these things. But nowadays, very few colleges are using the weighing bottle for weighing the liquids. All other colleges are simply weighing the liquids even in the small, anything they like. So please inculcate all these good habits of weighing in the minds of the students while giving the practical training and pipetting. Even for volumetric analysis, I saw many students are using the graduated pipettes, but it was clearly mentioned. Nobody knows what is the reason for having the bulb pipette, central bulb, with the bottom and top with the narrow tube-like attachments. Because if the narrow tube-like attachments, if you measure the parallax error a human eye is going to be kind of do, is going to be reduced to a great extent because the diameter is very small. But if the diameter is more, the parallax error is going to be more, thereby the error in the volume measurement is also going to be very high. So for any volumetric determination, we should inculcate the my, in the mind of the student that it should be only the volumetric pipette or in a colloquial language it should be the bulk pipette but rarely very few colleges are giving the training related to this pipetting 
Similarly, how to rinse the pipettes, where the rinsing is essential. Sometimes there is no need of rinsing in some analysis. For example, a non-aqueous titration, if you rinse it with water, it is going to be a hell of a time. You cannot get a correct result. So where to rinse the pipette, where not to rinse the pipette. Similarly, when you have the mechanical pipettes, we have two different types of pipettes like air displacement and positive displacement methods, pipettes, and we have to be choosy in selection of the air displacement or positive displacement pipettes. So one should be trained in a proper way because no book is going to give all this information in a comprehensive way, including the standard books also. All these should be inherited from the teachers and seniors. We inherited all these qualities from our great teachers who taught us all these basics. What is the need for the shape of a bulk pipette or a volumetric pipette? What is the need for the need for the shape of a graduated pipette like this? All these are taught and how the flow is to be maintained. Some of them in a hurry, they just blow the pipette in a fast way so that they can complete the experiment. But the surface tension effect and how much quantity of water or the liquid is going to adapt to the walls is going to be a volumetric error, what you are going to count. So all these are going to be, should be taught to the students in a proper way before we start the analysis class. But from first day onwards, sorry for again, bad comment I may consider, you may consider, but from first day onwards, start the standardization of sodium hydroxide, start the standardization of HCl. This is the procedure, take 10 ml, take 15 ml, do it, do it, do it. But still, you take two to three classes minimum. What is the need for the shape of the pipette? What is the need for a conical flask? What is the need for a uh, baker? How to select the volumetric apparatus for the doing of this particular titrations, all these things. So once if they are trained, they never do these mistakes in their future because in the intermediate education, we expect all these are taught. But we all know how the intermediate practicals are being done. Without knowing what is a pipette, the student is getting 30 out of 30 or 50 out of 50, whatever that is in a private corporate college, because there the marks are given, but not the ex experimental skills. And this is one more content, which I'm very much serious and hate some papers. Why I'll tell you. So we have the pH and conductivity and everybody knows that there are two pH electrodes or one pH combined electrode in which both pH sensitive electrode and reference electrode are merged together. And I read so many publications published in the third rated journals. Once again, I'm repeating third rated journals, especially the films prepared for transdermal or buca adhesive or some other films. They measure the pH using the pH electrode without knowing how the pH electrode function, which is a research paper for PhD or in pharmacy. Sorry for saying it. So if we just look at this, see, this is the permeable glass membrane, which we call it. And there is a platinum wire that is fused to this. And to complete the circuit for the pH measurement, this entire glass permeable membrane must be dipped into the solution. And here, if you observe critically, any pH electrode, which is a combined electrode, what we call, there is a small fused dot-like thing will be there here for this particular membrane. And unless this particular dot touches the solution along with this glass permeable membrane, we cannot measure the pH correctly. But unfortunately, they write in the procedure saying that the membrane was touching to the pH glass membrane and the pH was noted. So when you want to switch an electric bulb, the neutral and phase must be joined together and the circuit must be completed, then only electric bulb will blow. In the similar way for measuring the pH of a given solution, this circuit, that means we have to dip this pH electrode at least into the solution by about 1 to 1.5 centimeters. Then only we can measure, but it is a solid surface. How can you dip this electrode into that? But people are measuring it. They give X reference or Y reference, but the problem of that X reference or Y reference is there they have used the pH probe, which is shown in the last part of this particular graph, this is called as pH probe. 
where the surface is fused with this particular platinum membrane also and if you touch it itself it can measure the ph very accurately and each ph probe according to my knowledge is going to cost anywhere between 20 to 40000 whereas this college is not able to afford a ph meter of 4000 rupees how they can expect to have this ph probe in the particular college where the research is taken up so please please take care of this so i have presented different shapes of these ph electrodes here but all of them the principle of working is the same and the second drawback i saw many teachers touching this particular glass membrane with their fingers assuming that they are wiping the water but even your fingerprints are sufficient enough to change enough to change the permeability of this ph electrode thereby it gives the erroneous results so we have to teach these students in such a way such that how to handle the ph electrode correctly how to maintain the ph electrode correctly by dipping in a suitable medium all these must be taught before asking the student to do any experiment on the ph meter moisture content determination i am not going to cover it but we all know unless it is properly spread on this particular uh, surface where it is being uh, used for moisture content determination the results may be erroneous so i have just pictorially presented all this information and titrations again how to use a conical flask how to use a beaker how to connect the probe for determination of the end point and potentiometric titration or other titrations all these are very very important and critical so why the shape of this conical flask is given like this very few people can give the answer i can so confidently say when you are mixing some acids and everything there is a chance of evolution of heat and explosion so if you use a conical flask the shape is going to prevent that particular explosion it may restrain within that particular glass and second thing is if you keep it at 45 degrees angle you can add any liquid by the wall side such that the possibility of causing an explosion can be minimized to a great extent but if you use a small beaker which is having a wide opening by adding a liquid like sulfuric acid to water it is going to cause sometimes an explosion causing a damage to the person who is using it or to the surroundings so we have to be very choosy where to use a conical flask where to use a beaker what type of beaker what is the size of the beaker all these are first to be taught so my dear teachers just dedicate two to three classes every time whenever you are starting a laboratory work for the first years or the second years related to that particular subject such that we can inculcate some skills in the minds of the students to create some awareness how to use it and similarly volumetric measures we have different grades grade a grade b grade c whatever rotation you are going to use as per the official requirements we have to give that what is the limit of error that is possible with each type of instrument what is going to be used so all these are to be taken care while you are giving the instructions to the students similarly when you are using the filter papers how to fold a filter paper also many of the students are not bothered to understand or not bothered to learn in spite of the instruction given by the teacher because the teachers are not watching how the students are doing they are giving the instruction and not watching so please take enough care to train the students how to use a filter funnel how to use the buchner's funnel i think rarely few colleges are knowing what is this buchner funnel using the water i'm not talking about a vacuum pump using water using a vacuum pump we can efficiently filter many of the solutions very effectively without even the power only thing is we'll be losing some quantity of water which can be recycled a number of times what we used to do in our college when we are the students so please try how to use the filters centrifugation again what type of hat that is to be used is very very important sometimes we have to use the fixed angle hat sometimes we have to use the swing hat depending upon the application type for the normal separation we can use the fixed angle hat but for high efficient separation of the particles from the liquid better to use a swing hat which gives more effect of g because the number of rotations that is subjected that is the rpm of the centrifuge and the acceleration due to gravity with the rpm that is there there is a formula using which by subjecting it to 10g 15g 20g we can have more separation of the solids from the 
particular liquids. So for efficient centrifugation, we have to have this particular knowledge and type of the head is very, very important. And chromatography, how to use a paper chromatography, how to use the ascending, how to use the descending, what is TLC, how to spread the silica gel on the TLC, all these are basic skills. Unless this is taught properly, the student cannot master all these things at a later date because they may use these techniques at a later date at their advanced learning, but still we need to give the basics. Unless the basics are given at the proper way, they may not achieve that particular skill. And the least we can talk is the handling of the coverts used for UV spectrophotometry, both visible as well as UV resia. Many a times the students are going to hold the coverts in their hand, which is transparent, not on the opaque side. And nobody is bothered to observe, are there any air bubbles in the sample? Are there any particulate matter in that? All these are to be taught properly to the students. So what is the level of the liquid that is kept in the light path? Sometimes it is only half filled, but still they get the absorbance. We can get anything on the machine, but people should be taught properly how to clean the cuvettes, how to preserve the cuvettes. All these are very, very important and must be explained to the students to a great extent before that is subjected. And similarly, aseptic techniques. Majority of the colleges, they teach the microbiological subject, but still the way in which an inoculum should be transferred from a nutrient broth into the other places are plating all these things. How to hold the test tube, how to remove the cotton plug that is fixed, how to streak, how to insert the loop inside, from which part of the particular nutrient broth sample is to be taken for inoculation. All these are experimental skills. And Peljar and Reed by Microbiology has beautifully explained these procedures with pictorial demonstrations, if I'm not wrong. And one should have that skill. And my great teacher, Professor Allai Garu, Professor El Narsingh Rao Garu, they used to inoculate with such a speed, such a speed, I can tell you, we are asked to do this uh, antibiotic uh, sensitivity test, but I've forgotten the name. There are two tests and we have to inoculate number of samples. While demonstrating how to do the inoculation, they used to complete the total inoculation of 10 tubes within three minutes to two minutes to three minutes. Whereas the same inoculation we used to take minimum half an hour. So that is the speed and there is no contamination at all during the process of their inoculation because they mastered this particular skill to a great extent. So teachers first should master this skill, then they should demonstrate. So all these are very important. And microscopy, again, many theses, PhD theses I have evaluated, they simply mention the magnification is 45x, which is wrong. 45x or 10x may be the object lens magnification. But eyepiece lens also has some magnification. It may be 10x. You go to your laboratory after my lecture, sometime later, and check. 45 is the object lens, and it may be 10 or 15 or 20 sometimes, depending upon the quality of the microscope. Then both should be multiplied. Then only you should mention that it is 450x or 900x, something like that. But unfortunately, majority of the publications, what I'm seeing, it is 45x, which is wrong. How to adjust the focus? How to adjust the condenser? What are the different parts of the microscope? All these are to be properly taught to the students in the beginning. All these are very, very important skills. Then coming to the maintenance, Again, I remember my great teacher, Prof. Raman Narayan. He used to check us at the end of every class whether we have properly cleaned our glass apparatus and other apparatus and kept in the cupboard. Next day, when we come back to the class, we have to keep all the glass apparatus going to be used for that particular day. And he used to come and just casually check all the glass there and other things. If anything is not clean, he simply used to put a mark in his attendance list and used to go away without talking to us. At the time of the practical completion, he used to give the grades. 
and at that time he used to mention you have not done properly this particular thing i am reducing your grade by this particular point so we need to train the students but majority of the private colleges again i am not against any private college the lab assistants are trying to do it majority of the students throw the responsibility on the student the lab assistants but inculcate cleaning is part of your job because in good r&d laboratories even if you are a senior scale r&d officer also you are expected to clean the important glassware for your research because there may be a chance of contamination to avoid that you should satisfy yourself that is clean so we inculcate the habit of cleaning calibration so as a part of we talk a lot sorry for again i'm repeating it on um, we are, we are from the great platforms great people will talk we should make students industry ready what is the meaning of this industry ready that does not mean that training a student on a sophisticated water hplc system my opinion is not that the x company may be having water system y company may be having an agilent system or jet company may be having shimaju and the controls are quite different from one mission to the other mission but the basic functioning of the hplc one should know it similarly the basic calibration methods must be taught to the students like calibration of a simple balance calibration of a uv spectrometer calibration of a ph meter so if you inculcate the habit as a daily routine to the particular class who is doing the analysis class in the particular semester every one month this is the duty of the class to calibrate these instruments you just give a diary and supervise that certainly at the end of the fourth year i can prove majority of the students will know how to do the calibration of many instruments that are used by the college and that will become a habit for them even if they go out of the college also but unfortunately how many colleges are adopting this particular principle for training the students for calibration so make it a habit for making the calibration repairs let us not encourage the students to repair on their own but teachers learn the minor repairs first i don't want to say the name of the college but when when i went for that particular examination of the industrial pharmacy for manufacturing of tablets for finally we found which is a very good college i'm not disputing it one of the very good colleges even today in andhra pradesh but still the mission is not working i know the college right from its inception so i went into the mission room and asked what is the problem sir the mission is jam we asked the mechanic to come but he is not coming then i asked are you having the spanners yes so i got the spanners i opened the turret i opened the punches and if when i have seen the punches in between the gap that is there between the punch and die there is lot of fine powder that got settled or a period of usage which was not cleaned by anybody and that is causing the problem so i got the college to get some isopropyl alcohol and soak these dies and punches everything in that particular and clean the total mission with this isopropyl alcohol during the compression part and again i refixed the mission and i oiled that particular compression force adjustment and other uh, lubrication parts and asked the students to use it it took nearly one and a half hours for me to do that but after that the students are really happy sir we are able to compress the tablets i can pass the students or i can fail the student that is immaterial for me but still the basic maintenance the teacher is not bothered sorry for saying it who is in charge of uh, that particular laboratory he simply says the mechanic is not coming sometimes we should become the mechanics for making some small repairs or some refurbishments in our college i can proudly say with the help of my great uh, scholars who are again now in the managerial cadre of various companies we opened our single punch tablet machine and got it completely repaired without any help from outside and we got the fabrication of some of the parts which are torn off at the local uh, lathe shop and we refixed it and even today it is in good condition i can proudly say so we have to have that interest for repairs and refurbishments and during this process involve the students to watch take some minor help such that they can also know how to do those all these things 
and SOP, I don't want to talk much on this SOP because if you go to any college because of the Pharmacy Council of India and AICT regulations, we have SOP displayed at every instrument. I'm not going to talk, but how the SOP is going to prepare them, involve the students, they are the right users of the machine. So we should involve the SOP preparation also, the students also in the SOP preparation. Then they will know how to prepare an SOP. But simply displaying an SOP at the instrument may not inculcate some interest in the student mind. And this is the, just a format of SOP that is created by some good company and practice school. So the reason for practice school, I'm not going to give much emphasis on this because I'm, I, I claim I'm not a good expert in pharmacy practice. Though I'm just involved in some pharmacy practice uh, teachings, I'm not serious for that. Honestly, for various reasons, because of my work, pressure or other things, but still, I want to share my thought only, that's it. So, we have very good clinical trials and the efficacy of a particular drug that is demonstrated, but when once it goes into the clinical practice, the patient may not experience the same effectiveness as claimed by the clinical trials for various reasons. So, the responsibility of the pharmacy practice professionals is to bridge the gap what is making this drug to fail at the actual application? So they have to obtain the information properly by interacting with the patients, by interacting with the clinicians also. We know various reasons may influence. For example, the drug is not expected to be taken by a particular fruit juice or it should not be taken after meals. But the patient without getting proper directions from the concern, they might have taken this drug after the heavy meal, fatty meal, or they might have taken maja. They say it is not fruit juice or it is synthetic. So these are the things that may cause the damage. So the pharmacy practice professionals need to have a proper interaction. They need to have a good communication skill with the patient as well as with the clinicians. And they can have the therapy management and patient counselors. And they give the drug information services because very many hospitals are now engaging this DIC and the pharmacists are the responsible people for this DIC. So we have to organize the drug information services. We have to coordinate with the medication errors and we need to give the patient counseling. These are the three major tasks. In good olden days, the drug information services are maintained by the journals and indexing and abstraction systems and general reference books. But nowadays we have different drug information resources from different sources like FDA or Lexicam, clinical pharmacology. These are all the various sites which we can, uh, which on which we can depend very confidently for giving the information related to the drug. And we can give the information about the new drug or the product information. These are the just duties of the DIC and this is the query normally received by the DIC and it is going to be clarified and finally in the bottom line you can clearly see excellent satisfactory non-satisfactory or poor that means the response that is received from the person who wanted the information about the drug is also received by the DIC indicating their performance related to DIC and medication errors we have so many medication errors which are normal like prescribing errors, transcribing errors, dispensing errors, and administration errors. So at every stage, there is a responsibility for the pharmacist to curb all these errors in an effective way by becoming very careful. And uh, recently, when I visited USA in 2016, I met some of my students who are in this profession of pharmacy, and some are even the managers of big pharmacies of Walmart or uh, other companies. So what they are now saying is, there is a rating that is given for every pharmacist in the website open. So the patient after going back, he has to rate the pharmacist who has dispensed the drug to him. And based on the ratings that they are receiving every year, their promotions are going to be decided. And whenever they want to change the job from one company to the other company, these ratings are going to count very heavily for their prospects. So the American pharmacists are now very, very careful 
and majority are not interested in working on the front office that means directly interacting with the patients majority of the seniors they want to go backwards that means they want to be in the back office to supervise the work that is being done by the other pharmacists but not by them directly because the ratings are affecting their prospects to a great extent because they are doing prescribing errors they are doing dispensing errors they are doing other errors so we should be on our toes to have a growth in the profession of pharmacy practice and patient counseling we have to get the right information from the patient and to enable safe and effective use of medicines i just want to share a small experience please take it in the right spirit not in the negative spirit once again yesterday i visited a hospital related to my wife's problem and at the gate because of this covid pandemic they are asking all the details of the visitors and the simple question they ask is are you having any cold or cough the moment we say yes for it they will not allow us into the hospital so every person who is visiting there invariably says i don't have cold or cough similarly i have you suffered with any fever or are you are any relative or nearby patient nearby persons are suffering with covid so for every ans question they are putting to us we are giving only a negative answer rather than a positive answer except like a person like gandhi or harish chandra they may give the right answer so the pharmacy practice professional must have such a skill to elicit the right information from the patient because enable he has to enable the safe and effective use of medicines and they have to do the counseling privately about their medicines because patients want it they don't want to have any counseling public and we have to check whether the proper medicine is dispensed to the patient or not and we have to have a lot of knowledge of the medicines that are being given to the patients but also we should inculcate a habit or interest in the mind of the patient to have proper medication adherence otherwise the total therapy may lead to a chaos so we have to give good patient counsel and luke endorses the drug acronym to assist pharmacists in resembling the vital components of patient counsel that means he created the full form of do- drug in the name of dosage results underlying issues and general information so related to the dose the dose of the medicine patient timing issues and if the dose is missed we have to explain and results what the person can expect while taking this medicine that means what benefit how it is going to work and how a person can express about the working of the drug sometimes the patients may not be having the skill of saying that i got the benefit so we have to create that particular training or interest to express how the medicine is working and what are the side effects that are going to be there or problems that are going to be there for non adherence of the dosages and underlying issues does the medicine have black box warnings sometimes the drug is good for a particular disease but at the same time it has more severe side effects for example many of the anti cancer drugs they are aimed for treating the cancer but at the same time they cause severe side effects so they are issued with a black box warning with a black box on the top of the patient information leaflet saying that it is to be used with caution and if you are going to use this these are the problems you are going to have it us fda is normally going to issue this black box warning and we have to explain to the patient about this black box warning if any and we have to understand the allergies related to this particular medicine and what are the other medicines that are being used by the patient and what is their influence on this particular dose and what about the reactions to the alcohol and other things and precautions that are to be taken for the young pregnant or other geriatric patients and what other precautions that are going to be there with respect to this particular drug we have to explain and general information and we have to understand the patient's need for this particular drug and how to store this particular drug and what are the informa- what information the patient need to follow for the refills 
and how to dispose the unused medicines and if they have any questions how to get the clarifications on these questions so all these are going to be the responsibility of a good pharmacy practice counselor and when once this is achieved in the name of drug which is given by luke i have given the reference also and he is going to be a very good pharmacy practitioner so finally i would like to conclude we have to have a cognitive stage where we should understand the needs of the students we have to identify what is the correct developmental approach for inculcating the required skills in a particular student and the second one is associative stage where we have to link our training with the components what they are expected to deliver and autonomous stage where once the student crosses the particular boundary of a particular training institute they have to develop as a full fledged person with the skills what are inculcated into him or her and they they need to act on their own without any external help so if all these three are achieved by a good teacher we can call him uh, by a teacher it can be he can be or she can be called as the great teacher whatever methodology they are going to adopt for inculcating the teaching to the students and last but not the least i would like to share this particular story or whatever you call difference between a teacher and a professor a professor of philosophy at university of hostel has explained the difference between the high school teachers and university professors he said i am your professor not your teacher he stressed that teachers are evaluated on the basis of learning outcomes generally as measured by standardized stress if you don't learn then your teacher is blamed that means they need to give the basic training and they are going to be evaluated by the learning outcomes of the students and if the student is failing the teacher is blamed but he added it is not part of my job to make you learn that means a professor's job is not to create learning to the student at university learning is your job and your alone that means it is the duty of the student to learn not for the teacher to give the learning my job is to lead to lead you to the fountain of knowledge whether you drink deeply or only gargle is entirely up to you that means it is for the student to extract as much as possible from the knowledge of the respective professor and understand and assimilate that knowledge to the best of his ability or if you just simply gargle as per our pharmacy terminology gargle it and spit it out it is for the student to decide so dear friends we are all professors i am not talking with respect to the designation given by your colleges or universities i am talking with respect to your profession all are professors here we are like a fountain of knowledge we need to give that continuously and it is for the students to drink how much that is being given by the fountain because fountain continuously goes on running like that so please continue your uh, exhibition of knowledge to the students it is for the students to receive them or not to receive it leave it to them so with all this i would like to thank and in the covid pandemic instead of saying thank you i am saying namaskaram to all my listeners and i really thank raghu college of pharmacy to give this excellent uh, who gave this excellent opportunity to share my thoughts on this uh, teaching skills related to different parts and i'm slightly harsh on certain content so may be harsh may not be harsh according to you you please decide and if i am hurting anybody's feeling by my small comments or big comments please forgive me i'm not meaning x or y or z with respect to a particular comment i made it and i thank the patron sri raghu garu and co patron shrimati rama devi garu and convener dr jagdish panda the principal of raghu college of pharmacy and co convener prafulla Pra- Pra- prafulla kumar sahu also and all the faculty 
and other members of the Raghu College of Pharmacy. And last but not the least, I would like to thank one person behind this total PowerPoint presentation. My research scholar, Dr. A. Sharada, gave all the thoughts to her and she transformed all my thoughts into the good, beautiful PowerPoint presentation by spending a lot of time in making the PowerPoint because I'm very busy with other works of the university. And hence, I have depended completely on her uh, skills of presentation. And she made a very good PowerPoint presentation for me, I hope. And I hope you also enjoyed this PowerPoint. And for which I'm very much thankful to Dr. Sharada. And for last, all your patient listening, I think first time I have taken a very long time, more than one and a half hours, because the topic is too lengthy. Please bear with that lengthy talk. If anybody is not happy, Please, again, once again, and I once again thank you all for giving me this excellent opportunity to share, to share my thoughts on teaching skills. Thank you very much. Panna? Sir, sir, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Jogendra? Sir, we have uh, some questions from uh, participant side, sir. Can yeah. I show you, sir? Absolutely, absolutely. No sir. worries. I think one minute. Yeah, I think I'm not able to see. Are you able to see me? Yeah, yes, sir. I'm not able to get your screen. Huh? Just uh, what happened to that? You are visible, sir, and uh, this also question is also there. I am not able to see your screen. That's what I am setting on the screen. Sir, close your PPT, sir. PowerPoint presentation so that... Uh... PowerPoint, shall I... Uh, shall I close the PowerPoint? Uh, yes, sir. You can uh, uh, come to the stream, stream yard, sir. I'm looking for that. Somebody then, sorry. A link to Mali just. Ah, yeah, now got it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, tell me. Yes. Hmm. There is there, sir. By Aksha Jasmine. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry, mom yeah. students understand the theory concept very transparently by practical work in lab. So in this era, can ICT tools satisfy the students' outcome in learning experimental concept? Yeah. So I tell you, uh, this is a very critical question from my point of view. For example, we can use ICT for uh, laboratories also, but the background work of the teacher is going to be very heavy. Uh, I take a small example, being a pharmaceutics teacher. If I want to explain how to prepare a particular dosage form, like an aromatic water, aromatic uh, um, water, I need to create initially an ICT platform wherein a flow chart is to be designed by me and by pressing every time one key of the computer that should appear on the screen in a like a flow chart and we start explaining it to the student then the students will really enjoy what is ICT but instead you straight away go into the laboratory demonstrate to the student I think I wanted to mention that during my talk also my guru Professor KPR Choudhury and when I joined in the college in 85, I was given the job of teaching natural chemistry practical as well as theory. Modern analytical technique practical. Previous day, he used to call me, Professor Ivan Katron, tomorrow what practical you are going to do in the class? So this is the practical, identification test for carbohydrates. Then he gave me a sample. 
you go to the laboratory first do all the tests write your observation bring it to me i have done all that taken my observation back to him in the evening he verified everything this is the mistake you have done this is the mistake you have done you please correct it and when once he is satisfied that it is okay next day i am allowed to go to the laboratory so how many teachers are now doing like that you question yourself i am not saying it so for laboratory skills physically the demonstration by the teacher is very very important instead of ict that is my personal opinion once it is given you can adopt ict tools at a later date like uh, the uh, i have given already one slide where virtual laboratories are going to be used there are so many websites in the virtual laboratories we can use those tools but for regular practical work of any class we have to do it personal so in pharmacology there is some problem is there sir in pharmacology i am coming to your point we are in a regulatory situation where when we are asked not to do this we cannot do legal so we need not comment on that so we have to go for the software that are available in the market and train the students using only the software that's it i think she got her answer sir I think so for, for this question of Dr. Beswajit Das, right? We have a lot of uh, in simulator synthetic software in the market or open source. You can use those uh, software if I'm not wrong. I'm not a good chemist, but there are some schemes that are presented in the websites. We can just take the help of those uh, uh, software for the demonstration of synthesis of a particular drug. That is my opinion. Related to Dr. Bishwajit. What point am I right or wrong? Yes, sir. There are certain uh, yeah, these are there, which your labs are yeah. there by which they can demonstrate, and certain uh, you know YouTube downloadable sites are there yes. by which they can kind of they can show. And, uh, even, uh, even I I believe that as a chemistry teacher, I believe that you know. The every teacher in their own lab they can synthesize uh, synthesize uh, the whatever the prescribed particles that is there in their uh, curriculum, and that they can do personally. And the same thing they can make a video graph video it. Okay, that they can show to the students whenever they require also. So yes. it is a good thing. In fact, that will be you know in the coming uh, era. So every teacher has to become a very good uh, expert in the ICT. Yeah, for B farm class, B farm synthesis. I, in fact, I just wanted to give one more small session to all principals because many are the principals. You create a cooperative learning. What I mentioned in my teaching, for example, in uh, chemistry, organic chemistry, whatever practical, whatever the subject you are going to teach, you are asking the students to prepare some compounds as per the practicals, right? Similarly, in the Preparative pharmacy. We are asking the students to prepare some basic dosage forms. When the students are going for analysis, give this such that next batch will be analyzing these samples and they will be knowing what is the right part and wrong part by the student, such that they can have the first-hand experience of analysis also. And even the students who prepared that particular dosage form can also have. Whether we have prepared the right dosage form or wrong dosage form, by just sharing the total information in a consortium way, we can give good lectures to the students. But unfortunately, no college is fine. You can plan like that in a cooperative way. Right. Next question, Jagendra. Any other questions? Yeah, I think uh, you please give me mail related to this question. Recently, we procured two different software for physiology and pharmacology, costing around uh, twenty-five to thirty thousand. Both software for three years license. I don't remember the name of that particular software exactly, but that is a good software as per my pharmacology teachers. We can use that software for training the pharmacology and physiology. Yeah, they can mail me, sir, so that I can send that information also. Yeah, I have given my mail ID in the last slide.
Yes. I think uh, Professor Suresh already shared this information related to the practice school. In my opinion, you convert this uh, particular teaching practice school as a cooperative learning platform where you assign the students of different uh, subjects like pharmacology, pharmaceutical technology, pharmaceutics, or analysis, or drug regulatory, all these things. And let them take a pharmaceutics group will be preparing a dosage form, analysis people will be doing the analytical part of it, drug regulatory part, the other part will be doing documentation like that. You can make all the 40 or 50 students of your college or 100 students into different schools. So that at the end of the day of this particular semester, we can consolidate all this information like a single document like drug master file. So that the student will have what goes in the industry in reality. Last one month, you can combine all these schools together prepare a drug master file or anything as you like. So that it gives a lot of inputs to the students. That is my opinion related to practice school. Which I may think we may we are planning to implement. Personality traits. I already mentioned teachers should be always pleasing, proactive to the student, and always should be a continuous learner. What is new today should be known to the teacher first. Then you are going to be a real good teacher, what according to me. What I always practice. Right, Sita Kumari? I hope you are satisfied. Anything else, Panda? Yes, sir. Yeah, COVID learning amid COVID pandemic. With books, we conducted one examination for the second sessional of Andhra University. And where we have given one day time for the students to submit the answers. And really, after the evaluation, some are really good because the questions that are framed are really critical in many subjects. Unless they read the books, they cannot give the right answer. Unlike the general questions, what they normally face in the regular answers for examination or sessionals without books, we try to create the questions in such a way such that they need to think and do the application of the professional questions. Then certainly we can evaluate the students in the best way that is possible. I already mentioned about the answer. We need to use the software. That's it. ICT is nothing but software. Yes. I agree with you. So make all your faculty to do the experiments first and write the observations and show it to you, get them prepared, then let them go to the class next day. That is always good. Yes, it is a good question, uh, Mr. Kumar Kar. For basic learning, even today, I prefer the blackboard. Because whatever may be the culture we have, when we start learning the alphabets of A, B, C, D, or A, whatever that is in the particular language, if we start teaching the PowerPoint, the student may start from the right side to start here like this, and he may put center line like this from left to right to left. Whereas in a regular practice, we start from left, write it like this, and we write it like this. So always, Blackboard is the first priority for any good teacher to start the class. But wherever that is needed, we can go for PowerPoint teaching to save some time. For example, human physiology, you want to draw a picture of a brain. It takes about 30 minutes for a teacher to draw it on the blackboard. But if you create a PowerPoint with animation, you can just split those parts of the total brain into 10 or 15 animations. By clicking the keyboard, you can just create one after the other so that the student can easily understand how the brain is going to form and what is the structure of the brain, etc. So you can adopt PowerPoint for that also. Our chemistry structures, basic chemistry, organic chemistry, teach blackboard. And once the student progresses to the fourth year or third year, you can use the PowerPoint where the structures can be drawn in draw by using the PowerPoint scales. Yes, sir, uh, don't have any questions, sir, so far. 
sir. Sir, we have some uh, uh, compliments from uh, participant side, sir. Many are there. Thank you. So thank you for your affectionate comments for all those who have given positive comments. In fact, if I'm wrong also, I most welcome the comments. I will correct myself as a good teacher. Yes, sir. My senior in the college. Yes, sir. Sir, I Guru not know. I don't know. I See, short duration is not the key here. It is your mindset. Because when we studied, compared to the present day semesters, we used to lose so many classes due to some agitation or some reasons like uh, uh, eye infections, conjunctivitis. At least for every year, we used to have five to seven days holidays due to conjunctivitis in the college. Four to six or seven days due to agitations and uh, strikes by the students. And in spite of all this, we used to complete all the experiments and syllabus within the time frame by working extra hours. And we completed everything in the semester. So I hope compared to our days, nowadays the classes are running more effectively. So I don't say it is not the time that is going to decide the uh, completion. So. Dedication is more important. My opinion is that. I already mentioned this. I gave the answer for this question. We have to use other methods for evaluation of the students in this COVID pandemic. Thank you. Sir. Uh now i take this opportunity to summarize uh, your session sir actually you have started with your session uh, with the definition of uh, teaching sir and uh, you have explained about the difference between formal teaching and uh, good teaching and you have explained uh, different types of learning like uh, didactic learning deep uh, learning and uh, different uh, teaching styles and you have explained about what is the effective teaching and also explained uh, some principles of effective teaching like uh, mindset, professional culture, assessment for learning, climate for learning, preparation for learning and teaching for learning. And you explained some opportunities for pharmaceutical students and explained about innovative teaching learning methodologies in pharmacy like information and communication technologies, uh, library of uh, learning material, innovative teaching learning methodologies and creative teaching, real world teaching, brainstorm, class outside the classroom, classes outside the classroom, storyboard teaching, cooperative learning. All these are very nice, explained by very beautiful examples, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, coming to the part B, laboratory skills, you have explained uh, different components like safety, basic laboratory skills, field work uh, skills, maintenance skills, experimental design, sampling, replication, and report writing, summary and conclusion, weighing, pipetting, pH conductivity, moisture content determination, titration, separations, centrifugation, chromatography, spectroscopy, septic techniques, microscopy and maintenance, SOP. And coming to the part C, practice school, you have explained about drug information services and medical medication errors. And you have explained about patient uh, counseling. Very beautifully explained, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Definitely. 
uh, this uh, valuable information informative session will be helpful for our faculty fraternity sir thank you sir thank you so much now i request dr jagdish panda sir convener of this program to say word of thanks thank you thank you jagdish sir thank you mr jagendra sir actually indeed it's a very great pleasure to hearing you after hearing all these things sir. even the principals have lot of responsibility what uh, responsibility what i have understood sir so here the the teachers uh, training is very essential in the you know recent development recent advances at the same time core inherent knowledge development by the teacher is very essential and the learning of the each part each small points as simply giving a dictation or just giving a you know pre lecture before conducting the uh, pre lab lecture before conducting the practical it is not only is enough even a small events like you know taking pipetting out uh, also an important aspect how to pipetting and what is pipet what is the you know uh, in a different kind of uh, you know sizes and different kind of shapes of the pipets and a conical flask because every aspect also take very important uh, thing that they should have to you know teach the students which is actually still as you, whatever you learn from your teachers till date you are remembering means this is a what an impact on the students will make in his uh, in the lifetime uh, in his learning and their life so in the profession so the teacher has to take a lot of responsibility with the true heart that how to teach the students from the point to point everywhere how to take care and also now that uh, the you know the time has come that every teacher is uh, you know dtp work means we had to actually uh, what we had felt is that this is a somebody work but now uh, the dashboard uh, publishing desktop publishing is also any very important where the teachers also should learn all these things how um, your scholars are they have done a wonderful uh, these things okay pictures and all this is uh, because of her uh, knowledge in that developing such things so in the you know plagiarism and the copyrights so one should not use the any diagram of anybody so in when whatever we speak into the youtube so all these things uh, whatever you said is that is true that all the teachers should have to learn updated and the teach minute way every point to the students so that they learn very carefully and uh, and uh, sir anyhow actually in fact we have uh, in one topic we gave the three sub topics so it's a very big lecture for you also and uh, i am very much thankful to you sir you made a wonderful this session Uh, it's a very live and uh, obviously there was no you know people left the session entire session uh, they are the same number that is there so which uh, speaks that this is a what interesting topic and still there is a lot of uh, you can see in the live comments you can, you can also see that how the live comments are running like that and uh, i take this opportunity to thanks on behalf of my chairman sri raghu and the management uh, on behalf of myself and be for my colleagues uh, and uh, principals of the various colleges and line state related and other college other university related college principals and the participation and participants and i once again i thank you very much sir for our, for your wonderful uh, commendable uh, lecture commanded lecture and to uh, you know sensitize the all the uh, the participants to the have the you know to remind the uh, responsibility in developing the shaping the good students and uh, teaching how they have to teach and different morals of the teaching methodologies and thank you sir thank you very much once again yeah. and uh, definitely you are with us and definitely in the long term still we have to learn a lot and uh, and in the during covid time it gave a great opportunity to very many people uh, to take uh, classes from you like people enter the uh, national wide and once again thank you thank you very much sir for sustain uh, and closing us sir thank you thank you very much sir right on the back okay sir thank you sir so this is for today's session hope you enjoyed a lot learned a lot the next uh, to, tomorrow session uh, youtube live streaming will be forwarded to you through whatsapp group and email thanking you this is jogendra kumar signing off today